we're gonna start with a book haul because I have books to haul. And Raylene kind of doesn't, but she sort of does. So Yeah, I wanted um, to participate, so I, I made my own version of a book haul. Yeah, Raylene did the kindest thing, and it was just sort of a coincidence. You had slowly over the weeks and months collected some things to send me, and yeah. I think it just got to a tipping point, and then I got engaged, and you were like, okay, it's time to send it's this. It's time, yeah. And it was a coincidence in that like, I was having this last week is just insanely a rough week and mm -hmm. then i got this package from raylene and i was like i needed this <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad the timing worked out like that the timing worked out so well so there were a couple of goodies in the bag which were really cool including these handmade crocheted <laughs> little uh coasters that i'm obsessed with they're so perfect raylene yay um so loving those and i, I forgot to bring it down but a little Oh, and bandana. I'll have to wear that in a future app. Yes. Oh my um, gosh, we should both wear our bandanas. It's a matching yeah. one to the one that I made that I showed in an earlier episode. So cute. So, so cute. I love it. And I, w I wore it for the rest of the day yesterday. Doesn't it feel and fun to Connor wear a bandana? I love it. It is fun. And Connor <laughs> just kept saying, you look so cute. And I was like, I know. I feel cute. I feel like I'm like cottage core. I feel like right you now. were born to wear that bandana. Like it, it it's just, so cute. it's just perfect for you. <laughs> it's so happy. And then there was also a little wax melting kit, which is so fun. Like oh, yeah, stamping stamp. letters and stuff. I love that. But of course there was also books. So I want to show the books that Raylene sent me. They're all awesome. There is a controversy though. And I didn't know if I was going to tell you about this controversy, <laughs> but I've decided I will tell you about the controversy okay. because I think it's really funny. So the first one, uh, 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 they're in no order, but the first one I'll show is At the Altar, Matrimonial Tales by Lucy Maud Montgomery. <laughs> This is obviously so sweet because you guys know how much I love Lucy Maud Montgomery and Raylene, you said you bought this a few months ago and wanted to wait until I was engaged. Yes. Yeah. I found that and I was like, this is the perfect engagement present for Ariel. It's and so, so perfect. I've been hanging on to it. I don't even know how many months, but I've had it a long time now. <laughs> I think that's so funny because I had that cat ornament sitting in my shelf or my desk <laughs> yeah. for over a year. I was like, that's going to go to Raylene. Right. <laughs> so I also bought that, that book like, before I even knew that there was a possibility of you getting engaged. Like I just knew oh, it just... might happen. So I bought wow. it. Wow, you felt it in your bones. <laughs> yes, yeah. I love that. You wrote, Ariel, congrats on getting engaged. I found this book months ago, and I'm so glad I can finally give it to you. Love, Raylene, 2024. Um, so people may not know, Lucy Mom Montgomery was really prolific when it comes to short stories. She wrote so many short stories, mm. and they are all in a bunch of different bind-ups. I don't really understand... If they're, I've never seen like a full bind up of all her short stories or like collections of volumes yeah. or whatever. They're all in like, these are the orphan tales and these are the countryside tales. Okay. And these are, and it's just like a little bit of a mess, but I love this. It's perfect. So I really want to read this because <laughs> uh, here I am getting married. Matrimonial tales. It's perfect. What are they doing on the, they're being matrimonial on the cover here. <laughs> she's peeling an apple and he's hungry <laughs> that's what they're doing that's that's what it's all about <laughs> <laughs> that's marriage for you uh then she sent me fried green tomatoes at the whistle stop cafe by fanny flag this is really fun because i talked to raylene about this book because mm. at our was it our 100th episode no no 150th we did know. something. I forget what it was. For a special episode, we were, or Christmas or birthday or something. Yeah. We were like, let's buy each other books that have to do with the, um, with one of our past episodes. One of our past oh, hundred right. episodes. It was 200. It yeah, was yeah, yeah. episode 200. 200. And so I had written a little short list of things, like memes, jokes, mm. inside jokes. And one of them was that we had this episode where we talked about being in our 80s mm. on a porch <laughs> reading together. This was yeah. like a dream we have. And so I was like, okay, what is a book about two old ladies on a porch? Yeah. And this was the only one that kind of came close to that. <laughs> yeah. But it seemed quite long and it wasn't exactly that. Like one of the characters right. is like 20 years, 30 years older than the other character. Yeah. So I was like, and eh, it's not perfect. And I ended <laughs> up going with a different book. Yeah. But you then found this in a thrift shop, I think. And yeah, we I like, found two copies at a book sale. Yeah. And I was like, do you still need this? Because we talked about it and boom, yeah. now we both own it. It's perfect. And I didn't realize until just now, it's blurbed by Harper Lee. Oh, wow. Harper Damn. Lee says it's a richly comic, poignant narrative. 
I really think Perfect. that's going to be a good buddy read for us. I think it'll be a very wholesome, a good thing to balance out the uh, clockwork orange vibes that we had God, going on. that was on. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very scary. <laughs> All right. And then the final book you gave me is There, There by Tommy Orange. Indeed. Mr. Orange. So this was a book that you read. Well, it wasn't recently anymore. No, but... it was a few years ago. It was... Yeah. Maybe 2021, actually, or 2022. And you really loved it. Yeah. Doesn't he have a new one that just came out? It's coming, coming out, out, I think, this month, actually. Wait, I pre-ordered that. I should look into that. Yeah. It might be showing up on my doorstep any day now. But yeah, oh, that's sick. he has a new book. I love that. So you gave this to me because you just think I would really enjoy it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a great book. Here's the controversy, Raylene. <laughs> Do you already have it? I, I asked you it. to send me all of your yellow books because the spine is yellow. Okay, well, I must have, though, because it was in the yellow spines. I didn't but see it. <laughs> here's God what's nuts, okay? Here's what's nuts, okay? I was flipping through my copy because I was like, I Did don't I know. send Do you I that one, really? too? <laughs> Do I not? There is a bookmark from Iron Dog Books, a bookshop I've only ever been to with you. <laughs> so we bought this together. <laughs> That's idiotic. <laughs> That shows you how short my time span memory is. <laughs> What's uh, funny, though, is my copy got the cover bent and ripped. Oh. I don't know how. It's um, funny because even though I scoured all the photos you sent me and didn't see it, I still in my heart felt like you already had that book. So I was so in funny. my heart, I was like, if she already has it, you could just give it to one of your, you know, to Connor or to CJ or something. Because I think they would also love it. Exactly. So I feel like this is going is still going to go. Yeah. Feel um, free to regift my copy. I kind of expected that that place. might happen. Yeah. But I also feel like this has really made me want to reread it. Like it's like a bit or not reread it. Read it. Like mm. it's really given it a boost in my order. In yeah. My pecking this is order a sign. What Pick will it up. be read next? It feels like a sign. So I did want to let you know just because that's so funny <laughs> that we probably bought this book together yeah. six years ago or something. I and was we there, both there with you. <laughs> That was bad. <laughs> That's the funniest thing you've ever said on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Good night. Signing off. That's Ruben so out. so funny. Okay. I have one more book to haul. Ooh. And um, as you know, I work with Book of the Month on mm. my own YouTube channel yes. from time to time. And they send me books. And sometimes I get like really excited about the books and I want to mention them here as well. So this was sent to me, but they don't know that I'm mentioning it here. Um, and it is Good Material by Dolly Ooh, Alderton. I just started hearing about this, but I didn't. I don't know what it's about. I just saw that somewhere and was like, Dolly, what's this? So set adrift on a sea of heartbreak, Andy clings to the idea of solving the puzzle of his ruined relationship. Because if he can find the answer to that, then maybe Jen can find her way back to him. But Andy still has a lot to learn, not least his ex-girlfriend's side of the story. In the sharply funny and exquisitely relatable account of romantic disaster and friendship, Dolly Alderton offers up a love story with two endings, demonstrating once again why she is one of the most exciting writers today and the true voice of a generation. Well, I mean, okay, those were some big claims right at the end there. <laughs> really, <laughs> but really big. isn't that interesting? It seems that there's two endings. That's cool. So it's kind of, that gives me, immediately reminds me of a Taylor Jenkins read book that's about like a woman's life that goes on two different paths and it just follows both different uh, timelines to see what would have happened and you don't know which one's true or not and i feel like that could be kind of the vibe with that too like there's two possible endings but we you might not know exactly yeah that's really interesting to me so i tried reading another book by dolly alderton everything i know about love mm. and i really didn't enjoy it oh. i found it frustrating I, I own that one so that's yeah intriguing. i ended up dnfing that one I made it probably a third, mm. maybe halfway through it. Like I pushed through farther than I usually would. And I just in the end was like, you know what? I'm just not enjoying this one yeah. actually. And I don't, so I don't have it anymore, but I'm still, I'm still intrigued about Dolly Alderton because I yeah. hear about her all of the yeah. time and this sounds cool. And I'll be honest, I love the cover. That's part That's of awesome. it. That is part of it. Um, so I'm curious, I'm curious about it. And I was excited that it was one of the ones I got sent this time. That's awesome. Yeah. So I just thought I'd mention that. All right, 
How about you? You've got some stuff to talk about. Yes. So I haven't hauled anything because I've been a superstar about not buying books. I don't know how it's been happening for this long, but hell yeah, I've been doing a really good job and I'm proud of myself. So I decided to do another TBR haul. Um, mm. And all of the books that I've picked to kind of shout out today are all books off of my 24 in 24 TBR. So this is a little cool. peek behind the curtain. So you can see <laughs> some of the some of the things that I've been wanting to read. So I'll start with a book that you actually gifted me. This is on my list. The Last unicorn by peter s beagle this is one that you gave me like many yeah. years ago it's been a few years now since you gave this to me and every year i'm like i should read that i should read that and then it just never happens and yeah. that's like part of my goal to like read more fantasy last year i was supposed to read this this was supposed to be one oh, of the books okay. i read that was kind of in the back of my head so i've finally decided to actually put it on my tbr and cool. This one is so fun because I really don't know anything about it. All I know is that yeah. it's about a unicorn and there's a character named Schmendrick. <laughs> Every time I look at the back, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> but this also is helpful towards my goal of reading um, like older books because this came out in the 60s, I think. So right. that's also partly why it's on there. Like my TBR is almost... 50 50 like books that were published before 2000 and books that were published after 2000 mm -hmm. so okay, cool. if i read yeah. all of them then my goal will be accomplished just naturally um so then the next book that i've got is jasper jones by craig sylvie which oh, is another yeah. book that i've been meaning to read for years and this is by an australian author and it's kind of hailed as like an australian um to kill a mockingbird it kind of has a similar oh. vibe a similar storyline and i this is one that actually I started reading a few years ago and I just wasn't in the right mood for it. So I put it down after reading like, you know, 10 pages or whatever. And um, I've just been meaning to pick it up ever since. And actually, it's got a very cute bookmark in it because I tried reading oh. it. Look at this. It's got sushi oh on it. Sushi. That's so cute. <laughs> I love that. I, I don't often start books and then put them down intending to pick them up again. But anytime I do, I always just leave a bookmark in there. So that's where all my bookmarks are. But yeah, so this one I'm very excited to read. And it's one of the few YA books I still have on my shelf. So... I think that'll be a fun, well, not fun, but it'll be a quick read probably. And yeah, then the last cool. book I wanted to shout out is A Honker. It is, oh to uh, to not To Kill a Mockingbird, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. Different bird. Murakami. Different bird. Different bird. <laughs> so yeah, this is probably one of my most mashed potato books that I still Ooh. have going on. Like I've been meaning cool. to read this ever since Haruki Murakami really like came onto my radar as like an author that I was enjoying and wanting to read. And I keep putting it off because it's long and I know it's going to be really dark. Like that's, that's all I know about it, but I'm still very excited to read it. I think, I think I'm really going to love it. I think it's going to be up there as one of my favorite Haruki Murakamis, but also because of that, there's so much pressure on it, which of course makes me scared to read it. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the books that I am hoping to read this year. Wish me luck. <laughs> That's cool though. I'm uh, I'm really curious what you think about the Wind Up Bird Chronicles. Right? It was the first um, Haruki Murakami that I tried to read. Yeah. I think I made it like it's like 650 pages, right? I think it's I made long, it like yeah. 350 pages in. Um, yeah, it's around 600. So basically, in my undergrad, at one point, I realized. <laughs> I feel like people don't realize this, and they should. <laughs> I realized that I was allowed to design my own courses. Ooh. So people don't know that you're allowed to do self-directed courses. If you have a project idea, mm. you have a pitch, you have an actual plan, like it's you can't lie and not do anything. Yeah. But if you have an actual plan, you can then go to a professor and say, I want to do a self-directed course in this and this is my plan. Mm. And if they sign off on it and agree to be your professor for that course, right. which is just a supervisor, you can just do self-directed courses. So I did two of them because I was like, I just have books I want to read and yeah. <laughs> I want to make YouTube videos instead of essays. And so um, one of the courses that I designed for myself was magical realism. Right. So this yes. was like, I was 19. So this was back when I was reading like a lot of A.S. King mm -hmm. and really enjoying that surrealist, magical realist thing. And I was like, okay, I also want to try 100 Years of Solitude. I also want to try, or no, was it? I think I did House of the Spirits. Yeah, yeah, House of the Spirits instead of 100 Years. I did House of the Spirits. I did one A.S. King book. I did that book, mm -hmm. Wind Up Bird Chronicle. And there was another one. And um, I had to stop reading it. First of all, <laughs> it was too long. Yeah. I was just like, oh, God, I only have a semester. And I have five other classes. And uh, blah, blah, right. blah. So I was like, this is way too much. But secondly, it was the most, like, there's a lot of um, war crimes in the book. Mm. And they're so scary, Raylene. Like, yeah. it was really graphic. 
that was the thing it was so graphic and i hadn't read anything that, like that before hmm. and i was like not in the right headspace so i was like moving on yeah no nope. but I, i've always wanted to go back and yeah, like, finish it could so, you handle it now like is it that's the thing it was literally a decade ago so i'm very curious mm, now okay. you're 29 what do you think about it should i go back and actually try that one out or not definitely well i will keep that in mind when i do eventually get to yeah i'm curious it. i'll keep you in the back i'm of my curious head. you you'll, you can message me when you're like oh i'm at the war crime part and i'll be like it's <laughs> fucked up isn't it <laughs> oh no i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> spooky yeah